What's up, guys? Welcome to Project Germero. I'm Michelle Abadi, and this is Brett from Insane Power. We're here in Henderson, Nevada, and we are continuing the build of my Project Germero, which is a 2SS Chevy Camaro. And if you haven't been following along, uh, we're about to, well, we're working on getting the motor assembled. And today, Brett is going to show me how to fit these rings and also how to fit the my rod and bearings. Bearing. Yeah. On the last episode, we checked the main bearings and we had the wrong clearances too large for what we wanted. So today we're checking the rod bearing clearances. I've gone ahead and measured the crankshaft and I've got the rods out. I'm gonna show you one for display so don't everybody freak out. I am gonna check all eight rods, okay? We have two bearings here. We have the CR807's XPNC, which is the XP bearing and it is a coated bearing and it's a narrow bearing. Then we also have the same bearing in a 001 meaning the clearances will be a thousandth of an inch tighter than this set of bearings. Now, the reason we did that, folks, is on the main bearings last time, we had too much clearance. So we ordered a set of one under bearings, meaning that these bearings are a thousandth thicker or a half a thousandth thicker on each part of the shell, upper and lower, this being an upper and this being a lower. So when I put the bearings in the first time, we had three two clearance. That's too excessive for me on the rod. I want to be around two five. So I put one half of a shell from one bearing case and one half of a shell from the other bearing case. So as we can see here, we ended up exactly where we wanted to be, right at about two five. So we have perfect clearances using actually two sets of bearings. Now, it's very expensive to do it that way with both sets of bearings, about $150 to buy both of these bearings. At a discount, we get a good deal. So, um, so that's playing the shell. Most shell games are done at machine shops where we buy large sums of bearings at one time. So to get it right, it took two sets of bearings to get exactly where we wanted it. Now, a half a thousand, some people say, oh my God, that's nothing. Yeah, it's very small, but we want this to be as accurate as we can be for this. So the shell is gonna be pretty hard on this engine. Yep. So now that we got this shell game all figured out, we'll go through and figure out, check the rest of the seven rods and move forward with these while we're waiting for our main bearings to be one unders also. So when we do the next seven of those, yep. do you, is there a chance that you might need another set of bearings to? to... No, I mean, cause I'm using, cause I can either be a whole 1000 smaller. Yep. We only needed to be five tenths smaller. Okay. So I used a half a shell. So at, at worst case, I would use a whole set. And that, is that because basically we're using quality parts so you don't run into any of those? Yeah, they don't vary. Misfit. This crank, we already mic'd the mains and it didn't vary one bit. Yeah. I'm sure the rods all the way down are going to be the exact same. Cool. Uh, the Cali's product is so on point when it comes to grinding. Awesome. And then with the bearings, the thickness of the bearings years ago used to become an issue. Yep. They would vary. King has solved all that problem. The coating's on point. The, clearance, the thickness of the bearing is per, almost perfect. Awesome. Now, I'm sure you internet people will say if you go with a ball mic, they vary a little bit. For most applications, it's perfect. Cool. Okay. All right. That so, sounds good. Yes. You can always be better. Yes. Okay? Everybody. So, so we're going to move on to the rings now. Move all this crap out of my way. Okay. These are the rings. This is how I've always learned to do it. I still like them in school. So I number my cylinders, two, four, six, and eight and one, three, five, and seven, the firing order, you know, the cylinder numbering of a Chevy, okay? Yep. So I am a Chevy guy. I do like Fords and everything, but we're building a Chevy. Me too. So we're gonna come over here, spin our block to cylinder seven, because okay. this is the one that I didn't tape so you could play with. Yeah, I was messing okay? with those. Okay, first, first two rings we're gonna concern ourselves with is the top and second ring, and the oil rings will inspect that after. Okay. So let's start with our second ring. How you can tell the first top ring and the second ring, this is an iron, ductile iron ring with a Napier back cut on it. Feel that little tiny edge right there? Yep. Okay, so that is the Napier ring. This is the top ring. It's a stainless ring all the way around. Uh, takes a lot of abuse, a lot of heat. Okay. Works very good in uh, boosted applications or extreme conditions. Cool. Okay. Yep. So the first thing we're gonna do is put this into the cylinder, the top way up. And we're going to square it in the in the bore with this piece here, okay? Okay. 
So what it does is make sure that the ring is square to the bore. Oh. Now, if you people don't have something like this, you can use a piston yeah. to push it down in. So, and then we're gonna take our feeler gauges and we're gonna see the distance between the gap. I don't know, Anthony, if you can get down in there, but there is a gap right there in the ring. Oh, I see it. Yeah, that is the ring gap. So, so we're gonna start and see how big the gap is with not touching them. Okay, that's eight thousandths, and the fuel gauges are, see, yep. zero, zero, I've seen, I've used okay. one of those before. Yeah, yep. this is just a fuel thing. See, it's still yeah. pretty loose. So, so 20 is pretty tight. Let's go back to 18. I would say that is an 18, okay? Yep. So that top ring is at 18. So, Michelle, let's discuss rings, okay? okay? I laid our rings out and I numbered them per cylinder. I know it's old school, but that's how I do it, tape it. Okay, so we're gonna fit each set of rings to each cylinder and then they'll stay there, okay? Okay. So, first thing I do is take out a little piece of paper here from CP Carrillo, and it has a nice little formula here, as you can see. Unfortunately, I do not agree with this. <laughs> and it looks I'll, nice. I'll explain why. <laughs> okay, it tells us to, on the top ring to bore diameter times 0 0.0045. When we do the math, it's 18 thousandths on the top. And then it said be, second ring should be four to eight thousandths bigger. I do not agree with that. And our building over here at Insane Power, we actually make the second ring tighter. Okay. And I'll explain why. Here's our ring, our piston, excuse me. And we have our top ring location and our second ring location. In between that is a groove in the piston called an accumulator groove. It is to accumulate the pressures between the two rings. Okay. Theory is that the pressure between the two rings would cause the rings to flutter and lose compression. Well, with this new groove and new machining processes, the reason that we are making the rings not butt together is so they heat and don't expand and push together. So heat, the top ring takes more heat than the second ring. So why does it need more clearance? Now that we have these accumulated grooves and that, I believe that the second ring should be tighter. Okay. okay? So we're not gonna do it that way. Our top ring right now is at 18 thousandths when we put it in the bore and we're gonna check it with our feeler gauges. A nice even round spot. Take our feeler gauges here. And we're gonna check where we're at. I'm gonna check right with 18 thousandths. It's a snug fit, so we're perfect on that, okay? Cool. So then we'll take our second ring. It's right here. Sorry, <laughs> forgot we already did that. Try it. it. Yeah, Michelle's already ahead of me. We're a little loose right there. And we're gonna go 20, because they go evenly. And it's just a little snug on the 20. So we're slightly bigger. Okay. So our rings do not need to be any more gap installed in them. But what we will do, Michelle, is turn our nice little ring grinder on. And we're going to just deburr the corners of them that go up and down oh, yeah. the radius. Just so it doesn't scratch our boards. So we'll go down each one, each set of rings, just radius the corner, just so we don't damage our nice honed cylinders. We don't want it to drag. So I usually take the time and I'll deburr each ring edge. Would you use this same tool to make them bigger if you needed to? Yes. Okay. So I could take this ring grinder on here, set it to the diameter, which it already is, because I thought we were going to have to hone it. Right. We would lock it down and we would take it and we would go down and oh, grind. I see. And this little gauge right here moves in 1,000 increments. Okay, well, this is from Total Seal. It's one of the best made out there. Um, it's very expensive. Uh, your home average builder probably is not gonna have this at home. Right. You can do this with a file okay. um, to just open it up or a little hand grinder if you're building one at home. Got it. Okay? Yeah. The best thing you gotta remember is to keep the ring butted up so they're square together. So as yeah. everybody can see, we're butting these up square and the ring looks the same. Right. We're not at an angle, yeah. we're not crooked. Okay. So once these are done and fitted, we'll deburr them and they'll go through down the bore and we will fit them. Our oil rings, we just wanna make sure they're not gonna butt. Uh, we just stick them in the bore. 
just like we would any other ring, our oil rings, and make sure that we have at least 15 thousands, which we have more than enough, so they won't butt. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So our rings are nice. We can do the deburring, and we're looking very good. Cool. Okay. Awesome. Uh, Michelle made it a point behind the scenes earlier to ask me if what happens if the ring is already too big. Oh, yeah. Well, then I recommend that you contact your local ring supplier like Total Seal or CP, wherever you got the rings from, explain to him the situation, and they'll send you a different set of rings. Um, you definitely want to make sure that the ring clearance is correct because it could destroy a motor very fast. Have you ever built a motor with like a custom size piston? And if so, what, what happens with the rings and okay. fat? We can have CP make us custom pistons in any shape, form we want. Okay. okay. The problem we have is also, does anybody make a ring of that size? So we might have, like this ring has a 1.5 millimeter, 1.5 by 3 millimeter ring stack. Well, we might want to have a 025 and a 1.5 on a custom piston. Yep. First thing we do is get with the piston manufacturer and the ring manufacturer and say, do we have this and in this size or can you make it? So, okay. yes. Yeah, so, you, that, and that's all dependent on your application, I would assume? Yes, so okay. on 90% of the stuff we do, there's an off the shelf that works just fine. And then on our crazy builds, we get yeah, extreme. As usual. I mean, this ring set here is probably about a $200 set of rings. Um, we have stuff that has $1,200 set of rings in it. Yeah. So it's, it's what you're building. Yeah. So um, the, I'm not taking away from these. These are perfect for our, our application and what we are doing. Yeah, it's a streetcar. Yeah, this is a killer streetcar. I'm just going to so. keep saying it. It yeah. is. So <laughs> when setting your rings, people, do a little homework, learn, ask questions. It's very critical. You can destroy a set of beautiful pistons like this real quick. If that ring comes around and butts, it'll pop this top right off of it and you'll be all done. Crying. Yes. <laughs> so contact CP Carrillo for a custom set of rings or pistons. And yeah, then you'll be set. You'll be set. <laughs> cool. So we're going to go ahead and check all these, right? Yep. We, we won't show you guys that since it's just the same thing we just did. We're going to finish checking all the rods, make sure the clearance is right. We'll deburr and check all the rings. Cool. And then we're going to final wash here, and we'll be installing cam bearings in the next episode and putting this short block together. Awesome. Perfect. Well, you guys, uh, there you go. There you have it. Uh, if you have any more questions for Brett, uh, shoot them my way. Leave a comment below and we'll get them answered for you. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. See you, everybody. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate your support. Be sure to send in all your questions and tune in every Monday for a brand new episode of Project Romero. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel right up here. If you missed the last episode of Project Romero, click right up over here. And if you are looking for more content from Go Racing, just give it a click right down here and we'll see you on the next week.